Hi, my name is Chris Terrell. I'm the commissioner of the Pro Basketball Association. The PBA plays a pro spring summer season beginning in April of 2021. We'll have a league combine and draft. Players also have the ability to sign with teams separately as free agents. But the combine and draft give those players who aren't known to prospective teams a highlight of their abilities uh, in those efforts. Uh, the league starts a regular season in May, plays through August, and then the league championship and all-star games is in early September. We'll keep an all-league awards and update all information to the Eurobasket Network through U.S. Basket. Keep a first team, second team, third team honorable mention, as well as an MVP and Coach of the Year awards. We're looking forward to having you as a part of our season. What makes the PBA different? Um, the easiest way for me to explain that would be to talk with you about the different levels of basketball. At college basketball, um, NCAA Division I, Division II, III, NAIA, even junior college, all of those leagues keep complete statistical data where they record everything from field goal attempts, field goal made, three-point attempts, three-point made, all the percentages, the ratios, assist versus turnover ratio, and it's cumulative data throughout the course of the season so potential scouts can look at players that are playing at the college levels and be able to ascertain their level in comparison to other players that play in that league. Just like college basketball, pro basketball does a lot of the same things. Whether it's the NBA or the G League or overseas, teams record all that analytical data so that scouts can compare players against one another and be able to find guys that have the skill set and the tr proven track record of what they're looking at in assigning for their team. Minor leagues is a, a little bit of a challenge and a lot of it is economics, but typically what you'll see in the minor leagues, 99% of the leagues between college and either overseas or, or the NBA um, are leagues that struggle with keeping a lot of the data. Uh, commonly you'll see a, a game played where they might have a 10 minute running clock, it could be a smaller gym, maybe from gym to gym they don't have the same lines, the level of the referees is different, but a big thing that affects those players' abilities to get scouted for overseas is that the teams don't record all the same analytical data that they would get from either playing college or the NBA. So the levels in between in the minor leagues struggle in that facet. Uh, important things that teams are looking at in order to evaluate talent uh, require more than just a scorekeeper and someone making red check marks on a piece of paper for points. Um, we all see in social media where teams will share highlight videos and such and such player had 20 points, but for a real general manager of a professional team overseas to be able to sign that player, it requires something a little bit more than that. Um, that's where the PBA comes in. Rather than following a formula like all the other US-based domestic minor leagues, where the league makes it each team's individual responsibility to have the proper number of statisticians at the table, uh, the spotters, uh, the referees, the facility itself, the gym time, the table, the clock operators, uh, the full game video, videographer and photographer. Instead, the PBA provides all those services to the teams in the league. It gives you a uniform standard where the league ensures that all of the players playing in the league have all of their data recorded, uploaded to the league website, so that all that information can be displayed to overseas teams. I think part of the reason why a lot of teams struggle with this at the minor league level is the economics of the situation. Uh, were a team to put on a, a game where they have uh, full statisticians at the table, you know, a four-person staff that's keeping offensive and defensive stats for both teams, uh, score clock operator, three pro-level referees that are used to the size and the speed and athleticism of the pro game, uh, a photographer, a professional videographer, um, a DJ, maybe a hype man, um, all of the aspects that go on with putting on a pro game at the minor league level 
it's real easy to spend an excess of six to eight hundred dollars to put on a professional looking game. So unfortunately what happens is a lot of teams we're working with a budget. Uh, we don't have uh, 2,000 fans a game attendance. Um, some of those uh, factors mitigate their ability to be able to offer all their services to the um, prospective teams. And so teams will attempt to cut corners and to limit some of those things. And that affects scouts overseas ability to be able to get all the data, all the video, the presentation that they would expect from a pro level game. So this is where the PBA comes in. We offer all those things, the three pro level referees, high quality videographer, so you've got full game video attached to a complete box score, all the statisticians in place to be able to record all the data, the back end, uh, computer management, being able to upload all that data so that teams can sort and look and compare different players to one another. Um, the facility itself is something that's provided by the league, the DJ. So every aspect of game day operations is provided for the PBA uh, to prospective owners. And rather than individually attempting to go out and replicate them that themselves at that $500 plus a game number, the PBA has simple game dues of $150 where in which we provide all of that for you. So if you're a scout, a sponsor, a team owner, player, coach, or general manager, and you're interested in getting involved with the PBA, visit us on the web at www.pbaplayers.com. We've got a contact us page and we look forward to hearing from you.